In this Google Classroom video, we will look at how to create a quiz for your students in Google Classroom. So here I am in my Classroom account, and I will just click here on the Classwork tab to create a new quiz. When I click Create, a pop-up appears, and I have to go down and choose Quiz Assignment. Now upon clicking that, Google automatically creates a Google Form to go with this quiz. And by default, it's just calling it Blank Quiz. But inside of Google Classroom, what do I want to call this quiz? I want to call this Spanish Colors Review Quiz. Next, I can click to put in some instructions. Or, like in this case, you can just put a message there for your students to see. I could attach something from my Google Drive simply by clicking this button and choosing Google Drive. And doing a search, let's say for something related to colors. Here's a handout that I have in my Google Drive, and I can click Add. And now, when my students take this quiz, they'll be able to see this file as basically a resource for them during the quiz. Now, it's possible to change this so that not only can they see the file, but they can also edit it. You can also arrange it so that there's a copy for each student, so that they can type on that copy and turn it in as part of their quiz. So those are some exciting options. And again, you get that just by clicking Add and choosing something from your Google Drive. It's also possible to link to something. For example, here's a Spanish game to help people practice the colors. I can copy this URL, go back to Google Classroom, and paste in the link and click Add Link. Another option I have is to add an attachment from my computer. And I also have an option to click to include a YouTube video. So here's a YouTube video that teaches the colors in Spanish. I could paste in the URL for that video, do a search, there it is. I click on it and click Add, and now my students will be able to see this YouTube video. However, if I really want this to be a quiz to see how well they know these things, I probably shouldn't include the answers in the form of a video or a game or a document. But I just want you to see that it is possible to provide those resources to your students as question prompts or perhaps to activate their background knowledge in preparation for the quiz. In addition to the things that you can add or attach, you can also create something from scratch. So I could create a document, a slideshow, Google Sheets, Spreadsheet, a drawing, or a form to go with this quiz. Instead though, I'm just gonna click here on Blank Quiz, and it's gonna take me to Google Forms. Now, Google Forms is a completely separate tool. You can use Google Forms to create surveys and all sorts of wonderful things, but this particular Google Form was created from within Google Classroom, and it is tied directly to this quiz assignment that I'm creating. I'm going to click back to the tab where my blank quiz is. And I'm going to rename this. It's not going to be a blank quiz now. It's going to be Spanish Colors Quiz. I could add a description if I want to, and then go down to create my first question. So there's my first question. What color is snow, typically? And I'll click to put in option number one. I tap enter or return on the keyboard to get option number two. Tap enter to get option number three and enter to get option number four. Now by default, when I created this question, Google Classroom made it a multiple choice question, but that's not required. You can click to change it to these other options, and we'll look at a few of these later on in the video. Now that I've created the question and some answers, it's very important to come down here to answer key and click to select the correct answer, so Blanco. Typically, snow is white, so that's the correct answer, and I can determine how many points it's worth. In many cases, you'll have everything worth one point or ten points or whatever your system is, but if you want to, you could say to yourself, okay, this question is a little bit harder than average. Maybe it's worth two points, or maybe it's worth three points. So you can weight the questions based on how hard they are or how easy they are. Also, notice it is possible to mark two answers as correct, or three. So you can have more than one possible correct answer. Down below, if I want to, I can add some answer feedback. So for the incorrect answers, I could say something like, No, lo siento, which means, no, I'm sorry. You can also provide a video if you want for the incorrect answers, and maybe a link. Now this could be very powerful. You could use this as an opportunity to teach your students even more. 
Yes, they got the answer wrong, but it can still be a teaching and learning opportunity. What about correct answers? I could click here to give some feedback for the correct answers and click Save. So now my question is set up. I've marked which one is the correct answer. I've made this question worth a certain number of points and I have some feedback for my students. The feedback is optional, but I think in many cases it's a great idea and a good opportunity. So I'll click Done and that question is finished. Before I move on to the next question though, I might want to consider making it a required question. The students will basically be forced to answer this question. They can't leave it blank. Also, notice these three dots to the right of the required option. It is possible to go to a different section of the quiz based on the answer that the students give. So if they answer incorrectly, maybe it takes them to an easier question next. But if they answer correctly, maybe it takes them to a harder set of questions. So that can get pretty complicated very quickly. But if you want to experiment with it, it's a great, powerful option. You can also choose to shuffle the option order. If I click that button, then the answers that are presented to the students should be shuffled for each student. I'm going to click away to create my next question. To add my second question, I can just click here on the plus sign. I get another question. This time I'm going to click to change it to short answer. And I'll click to type the question. Type the Spanish word for blue. In this case, I don't provide any possible answers for the students. They'll just have to type it in as best they can. I can, however, still put in an answer key. So I can click to add a correct answer. Just like with multiple choice questions, it is possible that there could be two correct answers. So, if you want to, you can click to add a second possible correct answer. Again, it's worth a certain number of points. You decide how many points. Down below, I can tell Google Classroom to mark all other answers besides this one or any others that I specify as incorrect answers. Again, answer feedback is a great idea. And when you're done, click Done. Let's look at a few other options we have. We have paragraph answers, very similar to short answer questions, but this time it can be a lot longer. Ask the students to describe in one or two paragraphs their answer for the preceding question. We also have check boxes. This is a great option, similar to multiple choice, but I could do something like this. Which of these are Spanish colors? Option one, tap enter to get option two, and three and four. In the answer key, because it's a checkbox, I can mark all of the answers that are correct, and the students, when they take this quiz, it will be a little bit harder than the multiple choice question. The multiple choice question, the students can only give one answer. If there are two answers that are correct, either one will give them full points. But with checkboxes, if they answer correctly, but they don't get all of the correct answers, then they'll lose some points. Again, I should provide a certain number of points for this particular question and then click Done. Let's look at another kind of question in Google Classroom quizzes. We have a drop down list where the students can choose from a drop down list what the correct answer is. What else? We also have a file upload. You can upload a file for them to look at and do something with. Below that, we have options for linear scale, multiple choice grid, and also checkbox grid. And these are pretty much what you would expect. The linear scale is a hard one to think of an example with Spanish colors. But let's say something like this, just a survey question at the end. How well do you know your Spanish colors from 1 to 10? Here it says 1 to 5, so I'll need to change that scale to 1 to 10. And notice that that is as high as you can go. But I could label 1 as not well at all, and option number 10 as very well. I could make it required, but when I go to the answer key, maybe I don't make it worth any points at all. Click Done. And adding another question, let's take a quick look at multiple choice grid. This is similar in many ways to a matching question. I'm going to click Add Question again to give you a quick view of checkbox grids. When I click on that, it's very similar to multiple choice grids, but in this case, the students would have to click the checkboxes. In addition to these various types of questions that I can add to my Google Classroom quiz, I can also import questions from other forms that I've created and used. I could select a form and then pick the specific questions to import. I can also add titles. So yes, I already have a title and a description, but if I want to, I could add some more text here or here, anywhere throughout the quiz. 
I can click to add another title and another description. Now in this case it came in in the wrong place. I didn't want it there. I can simply click on these handles here and drag the description and the title down to where I want it to be. I'm going to delete that. I can also add images. So maybe here toward the top it would be nice to add an image. You can upload it or use all of these other methods to get your image, but in many cases a simple Google image search is the best. I'll just do a search for colors, maybe that picture there. So I click on it, I click insert, and now I'll have a picture at the top. I can label it if I want to, so that can add some nice color and imagery to your quizzes. Underneath that, there's also an option to add a video, but this video is going to be embedded right there with the questions. You can also choose, if you want, to divide up your questions by section. So I could separate these initial questions from the rest by clicking Add Section. I can title that section and go from there. I've decided I don't really want sections, so I'm going to click here and choose Merge With Above, and that effectively gets rid of that second section. All right, so this is looking great. Just a couple last things you need to know if you're going to be using Google Classroom quizzes. One of those things that you really should know is there's a great time saver here hidden at the bottom of each question, and that is duplicate. If you're going to create a series of multiple choice questions that follow a similar format, why not create the first and then click duplicate to create the next question? So here, with the duplicate, I could just go in and change some of the answers. I could then go in and adjust the answer key. So now with the new copied question adjusted, I can click Done, and I've just saved myself quite a bit of time rather than having to recreate the structure of the question. Just duplicate it and then adjust the duplicate. Okay, let's assume that this quiz is finished, it's ready for my students to take the quiz. Once they take the quiz, I will be able to see their responses here by clicking on Responses. Also, their grades should populate into Google Classroom. Before I go back to Google Classroom though, I want to point out that you can also customize a theme for this quiz. I could change the color, or I could choose an image to be the theme. There are several work and school images that you can use as themes. There's also lots of other options as well. Or you can upload your own. I'll just pick this one. It looks very colorful. I click Insert, and I'll X out of the theme options and go back to my questions, and you can see that by customizing the theme, it really gives the quiz a little bit of flair. Now I can preview the quiz to see what the students will experience when they take it. They'll be able to select the answers, enter the short answers, here's a drop-down list, there's the scale from 1 to 10. I didn't really complete my matching activities or checkbox activities, but that's basically what it will be like for my students to take the quiz. I can X out of that now and leave. And now I can X out of the quiz itself. So now back in my quiz assignment, you can see that it's refreshed and now it has the title of the quiz. And I can even see a preview of the theme that I chose and all of that. Now you may not see this right away. You might have to close out of the quiz and then come back into the quiz to see those updates, or you might need to click refresh. But eventually the quiz that you edit in Google Forms will be updated in your quiz assignment. Before I actually click Assign, I'm going to go over here and make sure that I've selected the right class. Maybe it's for two different classes. Do I want all students to take the quiz, or a subset of those students, or specific students? If I had actual students in this class, I could change that up, but by default it's just set to all students. Here I can set the total amount of points for the quiz. Yes, I've assigned point totals for each question. But overall, how many points are available in this quiz? Maybe 50. I can set the due date. Maybe I'll make it due at the end of the month. And the time that it's due, I can put that in optionally if I want to. I could assign it to a specific topic or create a topic to put it with. In my case, I don't need to do that. And if I want to, I can even put in a rubric. At this point, if I want my students to access the quiz right away, I can click Assign, and the students will see the assignment in their streams immediately. Or, the other option would be to schedule this quiz assignment. I could say that this will be available for my students to take next Friday at 8 a.m. I click Schedule, and you can see it's grayed out. It's not activated quite yet. It's scheduled for the future. 
Just so you can see the difference, I'm going to change that so that it's assigned immediately. And there, now it shows that this quiz is activated and ready for the students to take it. I can see how many people have turned it in at any point, and as long as I've set up a grade system, I'll be able to go into grades and see the scores that the students are earning. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And please click the bell when you subscribe. That way you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do that through my Patreon account. And you'll find a link to that in the description below.